We're going to discuss all of this today. Now, I wanted to get Joel Scalzo on last week, but he was busy. He joins us now uh, to get into all of this. But the first thing I want to cover with him is uh, these military drills, which we never said that Jade Helm and others were the takeover from day one. We said it's conditioning, it's militarization, it's all an Iran corporation plan uh, from the 80s, repackaged in the 90s, and again last year, called the National Stability Force or National Police Stability Force. The Pentagon's called for it. It's happening. It's NORTHCOM with SOUTHCOM. They mentioned Texas and Utah as hostile and Orange County. That's subliminal, folks, basically, in plain view, because sure, there's a lot of legitimate training going on within it, but nested is the main program of gun owners, veterans, Christians, Mormons, anybody who doesn't want to be a domesticated, anyone that wants to be self-sufficient is the enemy. Because again, if you're self-sufficient, you're not under their control. It's, it, it's elementary. So I, I don't know Joel Skousen's take on this, editor of worldaffairsbrief.com. And of course, the author of a, several best-selling, the best-selling book, The Secure Home. Uh, and of course, uh, he also wrote Strategic Relocation and made a film with me. Both the book and the film I produced are available at InfoWarsStore.com. You're insane if you haven't watched the video and read the book. It really is the best intel out there uh, from Joel Skousen, uh, Marine Corps fighter pilot, aviator in the Vietnam era. Uh, and of course, the nephew of Cleon Skousen wrote The Naked Communist. And of course, he's headed up some of the largest conservative organizations in the United States. Joel, thank you for coming on with us. I threw out a lot of information in the last five minutes, uh, but uh, are you happy to tackle Jade Helm first? Yes, let's go with that, Alex. Uh, my major concern about the internet hype is what you started out in saying that you did not say, and I think that's important, that this is not the implementation of martial law. It takes a very big excuse to imitate or to initiate martial law and uh, there's nothing that they could throw at the u.s that they wouldn't get blamed for unless we get to a war scenario but clearly as you pointed out this is a major escalation of the exercises the domestic terrorism exercises and and you know you won't be able to prove that directly unless you saw some of the scenarios but we know from the Fort Lauderdale, Lauderdale exercise for example where they were rounding up people and practicing putting them into prison, uh, that this is part of a taking up uh, dissidents. It's not imminent. Uh, it's a, um, a long crescendo growth of training and conditioning military people to do this without question, just like the Marine Corps survey asking or testing Marines to see who would be willing to confiscate American weapons. That's very, very disturbing that there is the intent to do that. Obviously, there are thinkers, globalists at the national level in the various armed services that are projecting these scenarios, they're not gonna tell the military directly a lot of things uh, because they know that there's a lot of objections in the military. But we have seen the papers of the Army War College by colonels and generals in the last few years saying our main enemy will be the Tea Party mimicking Justice Department statements. Absolutely, no, there's no question about that. Um, What's different about Jade Helm is, first of all, the scope of it. This is a nationwide exercise which differs significantly, you know, as a former military pilot and someone who's taken part in a lot of exercises, I can tell you that everything we did in the 80s and the 90s and, the, you know, 2000, this was locally based. Uh, there was no flying clear across the country with... Uh, um, you know, prisoners that you take in and practiced in cars. That's a huge you know? waste of resources. Doesn't it escalate the price of the operation? Oh, absolutely. I mean, these things are, you know, uh, nearly half a billion dollars just to even start talking uh, about this kind of an exercise. But the second part that's more worrisome is the covert nature of this, that you're going to have people claiming to be blending in with citizens and then putting out the, the hype. You know, if you see anything suspicious, tell us. Well, let me tell you, you can't practice blending in for a foreign scenario by using the United States. Exactly. The techniques are absolutely different. Yes, it's easy to blend in if you're Americans blending in with Americans. But you try that in Latin America, you try that in Kazakhstan or uh, you know the Middle East, and you can't use American soldiers to blend in. So this is clearly, uh, without telling perhaps the participants, 
that you're practicing for blending in in a covert way and sure. spying on and extracting. They use that word practice extracting. That means kidnapping, basically, taking people and then flying them off to a unknown prison. This is, uh, you know, Jade Helm is really um, meshing together all of the preparations for FEMA camps. And, and actually, there's more FEMA prisons being built on sure. former military bases than there are actual camps. Um, and well, they is, admit that. I mean, as you know, they've escalated uh, the, the hiring for internment specialists, how to process Americans, the Social Security numbers. Uh, it's all there. But, I mean, I remember back when they tried this with Clinton, they're also having the military go in and create relationships with the, with the local police to, to create the, 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 the preparation down the road to find out who's going along with it and who isn't when the Delta Force tried to bribe the San Antonio police chief. And that's why we had uh, leaks from New Mexico, for example, telling uh, us that they were monitoring right-wing radio stations, uh, your broadcast, uh, uh, taking names of people who comment on these blogs uh, or who respond on the radio to call-in television uh, radio shows. This is very serious. When local police uh, are uh, joining with the federal services in monitoring American people, especially targeting American dissidents, people like... Uh, you and I and others who object to the spying on Americans as well as the preparations for martial law eventually and the militarization of police. But I, I repeat, I don't think martial law is imminent I agree. Uh, or anywhere close. I think uh, this is a long preparatory process. They're running into a lot of objections with military people. That's why they're using a lot of mercenaries now. And I think part of these exercises try to weed out or vet who in the military objects to some of these scenarios and they, precisely they get on lists themselves so that when it comes time to putting forth your baddest most unprincipled mercenaries they won't be among them that's right and then they send those guys overseas to deploy over deployment they get put on the no treat va list uh, they get put on the extremist list, and the government knows that the vast majority of the veterans who actually fought and swore an oath to the Bill of Rights and Constitution will say no to this takeover. And so that's why they're listed in all the Justice Department documents that are public. Some were secret. We broke it. That They're the enemy. I mean, this tells you how alien and un-American and corrupt this is. Let me ask you this question. In drill after drill, not just this one, Texas, Utah, uh, and other areas... Uh, are listed as hostile. Uh, I don't think that there was a mistake there. I think they're testing the military as well to see if they get it. What do you think that was about? You know, I was surprised they didn't include Idaho uh, as one of those states. Uh, there's probably just as many, if not more, dissidents sure. from our movement in Idaho. Uh, uh, Utah is kind of interesting because right now the Mormon base there uh, is basically... Um, at least the leadership of the church there is kind of placating the, the government, going along with government, making sure that you don't say anything negative about government. That said, there's a tremendous amount of Mormons uh, who are constitutional conservatives that are the dissidents. So it probably isn't the state like Idaho. You know, Utah and Idaho, in my book, Strategic Relocation, are the two top-rated states. They are the most conservative states. They have a great deal of uh, places uh, that are safe places in those states. But both of those conservative states, like every other state in the Union, are tending to be more liberal uh, over time. The governors, that is. You know, the governors of Idaho and Utah both are trying to placate the establishment. The legislators, however, in those two states are very conservative and they keep putting tremendous resistance on that. And I was about to add, uh, I know for a fact that the new governor of Texas has met with some top people and is aware of the conspiracy. And you know they're NSA wiretapping the leadership in Utah and know that the whole cosmology recognizes a globalist takeover a uh, hundred plus years ago. So I think that's why the system doesn't like it from the get-go is because it fundamentally doesn't recognize the globalist takeover. That's right. And there is inherent resistance in those two states especially. It's unlike Indiana. I never saw a state fold so fast to tremendous uh, the wave of pressure against their religious freedom law. And, um, you know, and they've turned around, tail between their legs, and, and passing an anti discriminate which is a violation of people's fundamental rights. If you don't have the right to choose with whom you will associate, even on your property and your business property, then you've lost a tremendous fundamental right. And not a single person, Alex, 
came forward to defend the principle of discrimination, we have a gutless people, especially conservatives, who really don't understand what they need to be defending. Sure, because, I mean, if you discriminate against somebody on the basis of, say, they're a felon, uh, or you discriminate against a restaurant because the food is rotten, I mean, they're taking that word to the trillionth degree where you have no free will. If you have no discrimination powers, then you have no direction. Uh, they, I mean, again, they manipulate words to just incredible degrees uh, where people basically, I mean, it's like saying you don't like a dead dog in the street because it stinks. Your olfactory nerve is racist against, against carrion. Well, you know, there's, there's a real misunderstanding among people about uh, discrimination. Really, it is a fundamental right, like free speech. We may not like what a person uses as free speech on a, his own property, but he's absolutely free to say anything he wants on his own property. It's the same thing with your right to choice. They don't want us to have discriminating powers because they eventually intend to pigeonhole us into accepting things that we would not accept, such as gay relationships, uh, which this was incredible. I mean, it wasn't just a few years ago when it was barely uttered that we have to tolerate gays, and now it is protecting and defending gays almost as if they have super rights. Uh, without, and promoting it to five-year-olds. Without discussing any of the health issues with the gay lifestyle, which are horrendous for them and which are contagious and uh, the problems involved in there's a tremendous protection. But as a legal matter, it's essential to understand that anti-discrimination laws are what I call an unlimited extension of lawmaking power. In other words, once you allow government to enter in to what they will determine you can use to discriminate and what you can't, it's literally unlimited. They can keep adding to the choices. It started with race. And I, in, in 1984, was in Washington, D.C. when they passed the Civil Rights Deal. And I said on national television, said this is a violation of people's fundamental rights to discriminate for whatever reason. And they said, well, how can that be a fundamental right? And when I went through the same arguments and I prophesied, I said, eventually they're going to increase this to women, to gays, to other things. And, and we're living through that day uh, today. I remember seeing an article uh, yesterday right before I went into surgery. Praise God, it was a successful hernia surgery. The doctor did a great job. And it was, uh, they're going to bring the article in. It was a major university said, there it is. University requires students to apply for free speech permits. Uh, content of student handouts also must be reviewed and approved by school officials, even down to speech. Kit Daniels, if you scroll down, I'll give folks the university. California Polytechnic State University, uh, Pomona, is now requiring students to engage in free speech activities on campus to apply for a permit issued weekdays between 8 a.m. But it isn't just a permit for where they want to give a speech with a megaphone or something. So that's how it started. So I was against it at UT 20 years ago. Now they're saying that you have to get pre-approved for what you even utter. I mean, this is hardcore totalitarianism, and they call it liberal. Liberals, Thomas Jefferson is saying religious freedom, government can't be involved. I mean, they invert separation of church and state, saying Congress shall make no law restricting the establishment of religion or preventing the first exercise thereof. That says the government can't get involved. And so the church can do whatever it wants, not the other way around. I mean, it, it, the, 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 but that, that wasn't even for the First Amendment. In Europe, the church had sanctuary, where if you could get into the church and they would hear your case, then, 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 then there was no jurisdiction within those walls, and they just invert reality, uh, Joel Skousen. That's right, and uh, it's very, very important to understand that part, the, the free markets operate on judgment, and these are restrictions on judgment. Restrictions on free speech, restrictions on discriminatory judgments are restrictions on, as you say, the exercise of free will and the ability to disseminate objections to the government position. And that's why I think even in the military, we do have civilian control of the military, but we ought never to say that the military cannot publicly disagree with and lobby the American public against the politicians' decisions in the military field. And because exactly. we have put a clamp on them, they are no longer able to protest. And that's why we get so many frustrated military people that leave because they're sure. simply muzzled. Well, remember two years ago, we reported it when Army, Army PSYOPs at Fort Hood gave it to us. Uh, at a rally, they brought it to me. And then a week later, it was on Fox News. And the headline of Fox News was, Are Christians in the Military Extremist or Terrorist? And in there, it said, You will be court-martialed 
or maybe court-martialed if you're evangelical or if you are in the Tea Party. Well, you can do anything you want when you're off duty. Imagine, because again, people say, well, why do you say the military is so good, but now they're trying to take over? That's how ignorant the public is. The military is the most awake because they're in the middle of it and know we're telling the truth, but they're being asked to do bad things. The military separate from the politicians that are commanding them. We're supporting the military, uh, just like you were an officer in the Marine Corps, are when you fight for their free speech, correct, Joel? That's right. It's, but there's a tremendous pressure in the military because they can threaten you with court martials, with uh, lack of retirement benefits to go along and say yes. You know, they give lip service to the fact that there are illegal, uh, how should I say, there, you could only have to follow legal orders, but they will never admit that there has ever been an illegal order. And in fact, if you go up as the military and say, I'm not going along with this because it's illegal, you're up for an immediate court martial. And I don't know many judges and I've, I'm sorry, any general officers, and I've been up against a few protesting some of the amoral policies. This was pre-tailhook in uh, the scandal in the Navy and Marine Corps, and I protested some of those immoral activities to a commanding general, and he just laughed at me and said, you know, you're in the wrong uh, service if you don't go along with this. And there's a tremendous amount of pressure in the military to go But you along. knew it was going to undermine it, all the sex parties. What was that, Alex? All the all the sex and the partying, you knew that was going to be used to undermine it. That's right. It has been, and we have seen tremendous corruption. You look at some of the hundred-odd general officers, and uh, actually only two of them were dismissed. Tell you what, stay there. I want to hear about that. Russia and beyond. Stay with us. We're on the march. It's incredible things happening. Humanoid embryos being grown up to larger size and implanted in cow uteruses to then be harvested? That's mainstream news. Spider goats around for 20 plus years, part spider, part goat. Cows that create human milk by the tens of thousands in China. Open air pharmacological crops growing everything from chemicals to HIV for HIV vaccine. Who knows how this is going to mix with the environment? And there's no oversight to speak of. I mean, just thousands of insane things. DARPA to test. Submarine drone that takes off from the ocean. Can lie in wait in the ocean floor for years before being launched into the skies. It's an autonomous robot. And what does Warren Buffett say? Robot brain to take over VA death panels. Company that ran Nazi death camps to take over the health care. And Warren Buffett comes out in a speech we played earlier and says robots will decide when you live and when you die. Well, who programs the robots? It's all about the end of free will. Before we go any further, with Joel Skousen of worldaffairsbrief.com, the editor, excellent uh, publication, a lot of news there. You can also subscribe for excellent analysis, worldaffairsbrief.com. We are listener supported, and we have a lot of specials because folks love those, and we love them having those as well. This is free will here. We don't take your money at gunpoint. We don't get stimulus money <clears throat> like MSNBC or the other subsidiary companies or uh, $400 plus million dollars of taxpayer money like NPR. We are funded by your free will, supporting us. So we bring you Made in America products in MadeIn1776.com, uh, which aren't much more than the stuff that isn't Made in America that we also sell. We give you that choice for a little bit less price. It's up to you at InfoWarsStore.com. A lot of that's made in America as well, just not all of it. Some of it's made in Honduras or wherever. But sometimes there'll be a shirt I like or design I like that you just can't get here. That's how limited this country is. But everything at MadeIn1776.com, the Molon Lambe belt buckles, the long sleeve Molon Lambe shirts, all of it, a whole bunch of great designs, most of them that I came up with, so they're original, is at InfoWarsStore.com, subsection MadeIn1776.com. You can find the best nutraceuticals out there at incredible prices, the nascent iodine, uh, the high-quality vitamin D3 winter sun, uh, the true methylcobalamin, vitamin B12, secret 12, uh, the lung cleanse, the oxy powder that flushes out the guts clean and safe, a higher form of oxygen, truly organic, Mediterranean, uh, oregano, very low price, ancient defense, will sell out today. And we won't have it for another three to six weeks we, we've not sold out of this yet. It will sell out if you want ancient defense, herbal immunity booster. And the best part is all of this funds our operation. We don't just get up here and say, send us money to run the operation. We give you high quality news, analysis, 
reports, films, uh, the guest. We support other activists for freedom. And then we have high-quality products, very well-produced, high-quality uh, water filtration systems like ProPure G2 that blow away the competitors. We have the side-by-side -side lab tests by third-party major labs. We have the taste test videos, promo code WATER to save 10% on all the water filtration systems. Uh, don't just hear the claims out there about our systems. Go look at it for yourself, InfoWarsStore.com. Or if you have any questions or want to order over the phone, 888-253-3139, 888 I want to thank you all for your support. And finally, it was three years ago that I said we ought to make a film, a three-hour film, or roughly three hours, out of your book, Strategic Relocation. I, uh, I got the book. I read it. I couldn't believe from my travels how accurate it was just about the places I'd been or lived, uh, even the subsections, uh, where the problems are, where the racial tensions are, you name it. The secure home, strategic relocation, the book, strategic relocation, the film, they're all available, discounted. I produced the film at InfoWarsStore.com as well. So you're supporting Joel Skousen, you're supporting the InfoWar, you're supporting our operation, but most importantly, if you want to get a real map of not just here in the U.S., but every other major country, it is incredible the work Joel Skousen put into this. That's why his book, The Secure Home, is the Bible of secure homes and why he's such a consultant to billionaires right down to average folks and builds secure homes all over the world. That's another question, Joel, before we get back into tail hook and Russia and ISIS and the rest of it. You talked on our show without giving away client information years ago about former CIA, FBI building more inexpensive safe houses and bunkers under their houses uh, or, you know, really rich people building bunkers at an accelerated rate. Now it's been in the Guardian that they're building bunkers all over the world. They're building them in the Ozarks. They're uh, building a secret airfields in New Zealand and building garrison guard shacks and are really scared and most of the billionaires have left Israel. What is happening with this exodus of the elite and this hardening of elitist positions and, and, and then Russia building giant underground bunkers, but we don't have those for the general public. What's going on on that front, Joel Skousen? Well, the, the answer to that is that the people in the know, um, insiders, if you will, I'm talking about ex-CIA, DEA, uh, anybody who's involved in the dark side of government knows that a major war is coming and it's going to be a nuclear war. They're not doing these bunkers because of terrorism. Your chances of really getting hurt from even you know, the false flag terrorism, which all the big events are, is really less than one half of one percent or less. Uh, but your chances of being affected by this coming nuclear war with Russia and China are, are absolute assured. Everybody's going to be affected by it. And so that really tells you something. You know, the insiders see the government building brand new, deep underground bunkers, abandoning old dunk bunkers like uh, Cheyenne Mountain because they know they're targeted. So there's a whole new series of bunkers being built. And when they retire, they're doing the same thing. But you'll notice, Alex, that FEMA is not warning American people that there's any nuclear threat at all. Uh, but we, you know, I used to get a lot of flack from people because of my predictions about Russia and China being the real target, not terrorism. But nobody's, nobody's laughing now. Everybody sees Russia getting more aggressive, China getting more aggressive. It's really just a matter of time. It's driving the elite to do this. And I, I might say, even though I am aware of high-level government officials doing this, I do not design for these people. I will not work for ex-government. Sure, I know you just talked about, I guess, your other contacts and sources right. then and them approaching you. Right. Um, Joel, if we had the engineers, if we, I mean, if we had the time, the media people, we could go back to you 10 years ago here, 15 years ago here. You've been coming on the show 16, 17 years, I guess. You've been on since about 1998 or so of memory serves, so that's about 16, 17 years. But we could go back two, three years ago, and you were saying China's being the new enemy, Russia, we're going to start escalating crises there. And then sure enough now, you're right, people say, new nuclear war, that's all over. Now we have Boehner saying the world's on fire, all these top analysts saying we're in greater danger of nuclear war than any other time. Uh, you can see the move, you see Russia feverishly digging in, building some estimates are 400 square mile underground bunkers under mountains. I mean, this is, this is wild. And then you see FEMA demonizing anybody who's a prepper, uh, and, 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 and you can see it. Finance the radical Islamists, get some attacks going, use the Islamic threat as the cover for the hardening and the domestic police state that emerges after the war. 
and you can really see that more and more uh, your analysis is coming true. Going back, how long ago did you come up with this hypothesis, and, and why did you come up with it? Well, I came up with it clear back in the 80s, believe it or not, um, and published it uh, in 1998 when I was starting my World Affairs Brief. Uh, I put out my general theory in, in, in a piece called Strategic Threats of the Coming Decade. And uh, the reason I came up with this is because I continued to see how the CIA was covering for uh, Russian war preparations. In 1997, for example, the New York Times published the first article on this big 400 square mile underground bunker system in Yamanto Mountain in the Ural Mountains of Russia. And they went to this, and it basically was a cover piece to downplay the issue. They went to the CIA and said, what about this underground bunker system? Oh yeah, we know about it, but we're not worried about it. It's just defensive. And you know, I asked the immediate question, why is it defensive? How do they know it's defensive? They've never been in it. General Hobbiger of our Strategic Missile Command admitted that the United States inspectors have never been in Yamanto Mountain. It's got six railroad lines going in. Russians claim it's for mining, but you never see any mining cars other than removing earth, you know, coming out of it. But there's nothing going in there uh, except factory closed box cars. I think they're building underground nuclear factories, missile factories. They're going to be able to continue to wage war even after nuclear war starts. So I've warned about this uh, for many years. It's not possible necessarily to predict when it's going to happen. I think we're dealing with multiple conspiracies here. We have our globalist, Anglo-American globalist conspiracy trying to take down our liberty, who are actively uh, helping Russia and China arm. Just, we, like, just like the West is declassified, basically helped build up Hitler. That's exactly right. They're building up enemies in order to create a major crisis to justify the kinds of militarization of police, taking down of dissidents, FEMA camps and prisons, as we've been talking about. It's going to take a war to justify that, and they want that war, but they cannot control the war. They can't start it. They have to make it look That's right. Because right. the globalist enemy is the Russians and the American people, and, and, and anybody else under their control, so it's the old trick in the book. Cause the cataclysm so you can then have the excuse to take over completely. Right, and they're going to use, what better excuse to be able to justify a militarized global government where we lose our sovereignty than a nuclear attack on the U.S. military? Now, everyone says that's inconceivable that the U.S. government would want an attack and destroy the What, is the, what is the real U.S. government that the Justice Department <laughs> Homeland Security say? They say the veterans are the enemy. Yeah, but you see, the, our government knows that Russia and China don't intend to nuke cities. They intend to nuke the military and then blackmail the U.S. into submission. You know, Russia and China want to run their own version of the New World Order under their control. And eventually they plan to attack each other, too. I mean, they're, co they're predators that are temporarily joined. But the, the Western globalists are the most insidious, in my opinion, satanic, revealed and driven. Uh, it's the only way to explain this conspiracy has been going on for a couple hundred years. But they Do they have the blessing of the devil in, in your research? Do you think the Anglo-American establishment is actually going to be at the core of the satanic takeover, or are they going to yeah. be betrayed as well? No, I think they're going to be the core. They're the ones that are intended to win. I think Russia is going to go down in the next Third World War. I think China will be induced to attack, attack Russia's rear at some point during the war. Uh, in exchange for more and more military assistance, just like we gave Stalin during World War II. And then you see that serves globalist purposes too, because after the war, then you've got a new Cold War enemy, a huge China military, and the globalists can say that's why we have to keep this global military force in, in force, and that's why we can't go back to, to individual sovereignty. And in fact, we see sure. a NATO army and now a new Arab unified army being put together, at least those that are puppet states to the West. And I think those will merge eventually through the Middle East war that will come up through this Iran deal, it will merge into the beginning of this global military that we're going to uh, have to face someday, that Americans will, will plead for, basically, because our military has been taken down, and the reason our military is going to be taken down is the U.S. is not going, government is not going to give the, the nuclear codes so that we can respond until after we've absorbed a nuclear first strike. And I've written about that extensively, PDD-60, that secret order instructing the military to not rely on launch on warning, but to be prepared to absorb a nuclear first strike. I think you're going to see that happen. 
and it's going to take out the military. And that's why as much as I'm in favor of um, defending our country and military service, I do no longer recommend that good people join the military. Our government will not protect you. They're setting up the military to take the hit in this next war. And if you're in the military, it's not enough that the vaccines that are forced upon you, but if you're in the military, chances are very, very high that you're going to be nuked. And the time frame, 2020, 2025? I can't tell when it's going to happen, but I can tell you, I don't think Russia and China are ready until the beginning of the next decade. All of their top-line weapon, new weapon systems aren't coming online. They admit until... that. In fact, their deadline yeah. is about 2021, they say. And they may be cheating a little bit, but I'll tell you, it just takes years to build the kinds of blue water Navy things that China needs, the new submarines, the new aircraft carriers. Uh, they're not relying a lot on aircraft carriers, by the way, because they know that's obsolete technology. Submarines. But super uh, hyper missiles and nuclear weapons, you can take out aircraft carrier task force in an instant. Absolutely, and you've operated off those. Well, RT reports, and, and again, when we're being told about something, it's already there. And this is what I was told by a lot of folks, plus it's been admitted that a long time ago they were developing this, that they have these basically subs, the, well, these containers, these packages that sit on the bottom, they pop up and the device goes to the surface. It's basically a huge cruise missile carrying other smaller cruise missiles. Then it goes in below the radar uh, and takes out targets. I mean, for me, in, in my research into nukes, isn't this really the ultimate weapon compared to even space space or ICBM? Isn't this what's hard to really shoot down, even if you think you have jamming equipment on the ground, Joel? It is, and a lot of it depends on the jamming. This is a real high-tech war that both Russia and the U.S. are preparing for. Russia feels like they've got the electronic. That's why they're e they permit the U.S. to take down Iraq, even though they promised to defend Saddam Hussein. They learn more about U.S. military technology by eavesdropping on our war capabilities against defenseless countries. Uh, and, and that's the reason we can go in and obliterate any country we, we attack, because we can jam all their radar. All of the stuff that Russia sends over that can be jammed, we can go in almost undetected. And this new, and I've always said, the reason why the globalists who run our government are... Um, are going to let the military taken down as they have secret weapon systems that they can be used afterwards to keep any further attacks from happening. And I think what you've just described are some of those top secret weapon systems that can then keep the enemy at bay while we regroup under the name of, glo of a globalist military. That's, That's right. And it, I mean, it's real simple. You just got a container on the bottom of the ocean, totally undetected, turned off. It gets activated. Um, by some of these different classified systems. They've got systems that shoot a radio wave through the Earth, activator, satellites, you name it. What about the incredible reliance on GPS? We know the Chinese and the Russians plan to shoot down in a matter of hours the GPS satellites. Uh, do they have backups? Are they going to go back to these, uh, these uh, antenna systems that they use to communicate through the Earth uh, that they've got up by Dallas? I mean, what's the plan there? Two plans, uh, according to my sources, one is backups, which they have several satellites ready to be launched. But more interestingly is they have backups already in space that are turned off and that cannot be detected. So when certain ones are shot down, the obvious ones, they simply turn on others and deplete, you know, the resources, the, the anti-SAT resources. That's what I was but, told, because the miniaturization, they've got packages up there where a whole bunch of backups are then released. It's amazing. Joel Skousen, we're talking near future, which is already our present. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Last week in a speech and said, AI is being designed to end humans' usefulness. The, the architecture is being set up, basically echoing what I've said and others have said, to where we're building a world that's not for people. And of course, that's what Bill Joyce said 16 years ago in Why the Future Doesn't Need Us. And Wired Magazine, himself a billionaire, one of the owners of Sun Microsystems, co-chairman. What we're talking about is a predatory system. And, and Joel Scalz has agreed to stay with us 20, 30 minutes, as long as he can, into the next hour to take your phone calls on any specific questions for him or if you agree or disagree, specifically for Joel Skousen. He'll be with us 20, 30 minutes in the next hour. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Specifically for him, first-time callers. 800-259-9231.
But Joel, pulling back from this, the more I research it, the more I see how it operates, you really come face to face with the fact in their own writings they admit they're into the occult. These are people that believe they serve the God of this world who if they carry out these plans will be given eternal life through the machines. They will escape judgment. You and I have talked about this before, but folks need to understand this isn't us saying this. This is what we get out of Skull and Bones and Bohemian Grove. This is what Ray Kurzweil uh, and, and, and all these guys are saying. They're now externalizing the hierarchy. They're now selling this to the general public, except giving up your humanity. Turn yourself over to the robots making the decisions, and you will be allowed to live forever. How would anyone believe these people? Oh, I mean, it, it's just so fantastical. It's out of this world. Uh, it is satanic. Can you speak to that? Well, what, what drives the, the globalist uh, is that, you know, everybody has a conscience. Everybody is part of humanity. You get information from a divine source criticizing you, uh, prompting you to do the right thing. And people who are bad, who want to do the thing, that are in constant rebellion against conscience. And there's another voice that comes through that center of the mind that perceives spiritual information from Satan, you know, temptations trying to get you to do things, countering what the Lord wants you to do. Oh, you don't want to do that. Uh, you're too tired or you want to do this. Uh, ultimately, the people who migrate towards the dark side end up with a real problem is that they inwardly still know there's going to be a judgment day someday. And what the oil that makes the conspiracy work is the promise of immunity. We see it on earth. They promise them immunity from prosecution. You look at the people who get off scot-free, this uh, IRS director who Congress isn't going to prosecute for contempt. She should be. Why does that happen? Why do some people get off? Because they're part of the system. They've got immunity. Bill Clinton obviously had immunity. They got him off. And it's not just the Democrats that get him off. It's the Republicans that buy into this, too. But ultimately, I think, and this is my own theory, Alex, that there's a larger promise of immunity to probably only at the higher revelatory states to the top levels of globalism who probably do have their own revelation or seance with, this, uh, with Satan or God of this world. They're promised immunity from God's judgment if he helps them overthrow what is good in life. And they need immunity from God's judgment. I mean, they got a mountain of sins. They're facing the chains of hell. They, uh, they try not to believe it, but it's there. They feel it. They know it's true, yeah. and they understand. They're scared. Back in 60 seconds, I want you to continue getting into this. It's, it's the big secret they don't want you to know about, folks. Third hour, call your friends and family. Thank Tell them to tune in now. To Email everybody. Visit Get folks to tune in now. They need to hear this, folks. For all of recorded history, civilizations around the world praised the health benefits of silver. At InfoWars Life, our mission is to bring you the highest quality, purest, cleanest, effective colloidal silver on the market today for the lowest price available. You don't have to be a doctor to know. The fall and winter months are the most dangerous time of year in North America when it comes to you and your family's health. InfoWarsLife.com is very excited to announce our biggest run yet of silver. Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Now InfoWarsLife.com has taken colloidal silver to the next level using a cutting-edge technique that is free of toxic artificial additives. Now more than ever, it's important to stock up on high-quality Silver Bullet from InfoWarsLife.com. No survival chest is complete without Silver Bullet. Secure your Silver Bullet today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Silver Bullet. Denying this planetary plan to admitting it's a planetary takeover and that it's even authoritarian as the Financial Times of London did a few years ago, but saying it's a good totalitarianism while separately attacking us for saying it's not a good plan. Joel Scalzi, this is a short segment. I want to give you the floor to finish up getting into free will, why they're attacking it. They claim they're here to empower people. The truth is they're openly here to enslave people and ultimately end humanity as we know it. And you were getting into this attack on free will. And then at the highest level of the pyramid, the, the, uh, the Satan wants to play God because he wants to escape judgment as well, not just his minions. Well, you know, the t you talk about empower, the promise of empower. There's a lot of uh, subtle uh, 
enticements that uh, this satanic conspiracy operates. Uh, you know, very few at the top level, um, except the top level, I think, have a revelatory relationship with Satan. You know, there's this generational effect in this conspiracy. It goes on generation after generation. No single person could design a system of conflict so complex that would exceed his lifetime three times and plan that and see that it's carried forth. It has to be revelatory in nature. But most of the people at the second and third and fourth level down from the hierarchy, they use all kinds of inducements, climbing the ladder, wine, women, song, the promise of immunity, other things to keep people. They even hire mostly just predictable people that they don't have to tell there's a conspiracy operating. They will do the liberal agenda because they've shown that proclivity. But for the general public, they promise empowerment. But what that really means is empowerment through government power, through linking yourself with government. That's how they lure in these corporations. We give you first contracts and think we'll make you wealthy. In fact, you cannot hardly compete nowadays in a tough economy without government contracts and these insider relations. So it's empowerment through government. The free market runs on the empowerment through good judgment, through the proper use of, 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 of uh, self-control, through listening to conscience rather than a rule-making approach. It's a very fluid thing. And the serious thing about this conscience that I've been talking about is that these meds that uh, are mood-altering drugs actually, I have found, deaden the center of the mind which receives divine inspiration, it deadens it. And that's why there's such a very interesting relationship between these mood-altering drugs and the withdrawal from them that allows Satan to come in and have near total uh, compulsion there to drive people to suicide and do other evil things uh, such as has been happening. But going back to what I was saying uh, about the immunity pact that makes this drive, at the highest levels, there's this promise of making you safe from the judgments of God. And that's very attractive to a lot of people who have a lot of sins. And, you know, there's a, a vision that Isaiah had about this in Isaiah chapter 14, where he talks about seeing all of the great and powerful in prison, in the chains of hell. And that kind of gives you an indication that the great and powerful of the world will get that way because of this pact with Satan, the Faustian pact, if you will. And then they see... Satan descend, or he that was going to thrash the world with the power of his hand, descend into hell in chains, and they realize the jig is up. He's not going to be able to save them, and they utter, Art thou become low like unto us? I think that's a, a type and a parable of indicating that of this pact that's been going on since the beginning of the time. Work with me, and I'll promise to dethrone God you won't suffer the chains of hell, then they see him eventually descend into hell and they realize it didn't work. They are so deceived, though, in my gut, in my spirit, but historically as well. You can see the fall of tyrants always comes. You can see that the elite are following Lucifer. Don't they know he will fall? <laughs> they don't. It works. Uh, what I'm just saying, he lures in a lot of people. and uh, Yeah, but I can you know, see being lured by sin. I mean, we're all sinners, but I know it's bad. I know it loses. I, I just, I guess they've been given over to great delusion. Powerful interview with Joel Skousen. More straight ahead. Wow. Relationship with Christ. I know this stuff's true. I infiltrated Bohemian Grove. The only person to ever get in and out and not get arrested. I'm not bragging that was God's hand in that. I was questioned by the Secret Service and by sheriff's deputies. Didn't even lie to him. I just said, I'm here visiting the Hillbillies. That's the Bushes Club. They said, are you a member? And I would say, no, I'm visiting. And I did go visit their camp. They weren't there. They were off getting drunk. And you could laugh at the ritual there in 2000, 16 years ago. It's in my film, Dark Secrets Inside Bohemian Grove. And during the ritual, with over a thousand worldly powerful billionaires and others, Movie stars, you name it, watching them do the Moloch ritual. People say Moloch is, uh, you know, a, a bull, not an owl. This is all interchangeable. It really is a bull if you look at it. It's a horned owl slash bull. They burn a child in heaven to it. Those men were in religious ecstasy. I grew up a Southern Baptist slash evangelical slash Methodist. We would go to all those churches because my grandmother on my dad's side was a Methodist. His dad was a Baptist. My mom's family was Southern Baptist. So I went to, we also had evangelical churches we went to. I haven't seen ecstasy people in religious rapture like I did at Bohemian Grove. 
And I, with Mike Hansen, who was there with me, simply said, my sidekick at the time, Mike now does a great job in private business. Got to have him on as a guest sometime, but he's so humble. He's seen it all. I said, this is very interesting. And those men looked at me like they wanted to tear my head off. They were there just like the ancient Jews in a good way, but this was a bad way, wanted to go to the temple and, go, and have the priest go beyond the veil to relieve them of their sins, to have the blood pass over them so that the judgment, the angel of death, wouldn't get them. That was what I was seeing, and they even talked about Faust. It was a mix of Faust, Canaanite, Babylonian, uh, Druidic magic, uh, Men in Powers, a political retrospective, written by the former German Chancellor Helmut Schmidt. He says, we have our own groves we do rituals in. I have blow-ups of the book and the film. Uh, the book's back there on the bookshelf. That guy's, I think it's back on that bookshelf in there in that room, and in that studio. And he says, but I love the rituals at Bohemian Grove, and more gets done with the Trilateral Commission and CFR there. And then they admit in mainstream news, it's giant gay orgies, homosexual orgies. And so you need to understand, it's all about rebellion against the order of things. And it leads to destruction. And I'm not here at some level of hating gay people. It's that historically, whether it's Sodom and Gomorrah or the fall of Rome or now, that is pushed at the center of it. Uh, Joel Scals, in final comments on this deal with the devil, then I want to go to some phone calls. Well, it works by the lure of immunity at the top, the immunity against the chains of hell, and at the lower levels, immunity against earthly sins by controlling judges in Congress and other uh, aspects of law enforcement. As, As above, above, so below. That's right. Uh, at various forms of, uh, of um, you know, control, and that's very important to have the, the control of uh, the judiciary. So this system is not going away. Uh, at best, what we can do, I think, is to try to build a resistance movement, and that's why, even though I don't believe that we're powerful enough to stop them, I think that we have to educate as many people to build the remnant the remnant which God will inspire to resist. And ultimately, I think the second coming comes to stop the satanic control and to take it down. And then they will know that the promises of immunity do not hold and that they will, in fact, uh, experience the chains of hell. But really, they do. it does drive them tremendously uh, to have this promise of immunity. It's very, very effective. You're seeing it all through history, and it's uh, we're watching it at this very time. God is a just God and gives us all these blessings, our wonderful consciousness, our free will. Everything good flows out of God that created reality. Anyone who has their head screwed on halfway straight feels it, knows it, sees it. And I've had experiences that are private I won't even get into on air. It's real, folks. The enemy knows that. How could these people not know that Lucifer is the counterfeit? They believe Christ is the counterfeit. How do they not in their very soul, know it as prima facie, Joel. It doesn't matter if they know it or not. I mean, Satan knows what's real. He still fights against it. And that's the point. When you get a history, a backlog of sin, and one of the point I wanted to make, the reason why the gay agenda is so important to this globalist agenda is because uh, part of the lure is to have dirt on people, to control them to tell them, look, we've got this and this, so you're going to do what we ask you to do, or we will reveal these things. And then they get deeper into it. Once you get deep enough into it, in these kinds of sins, and they love blackmailable sins. Homosexuality used to be the ultimate blackmailable sin. It isn't as much today, but it still is significant. Uh, and uh, they use that to cause people to say, look, this is your best choice out. It doesn't matter if you know that hell is coming. They're promising them immunity from that. And that's an illusory hope that, in fact, lures a lot of people in. It does work. So they just do it out of um, fear. Yeah, fear of, of uh, the two uh, bad choices, you know, uh, admitting and what I'm doing is wrong and taking the consequences or the promise the illusory promise that somehow someone's going to give me immunity in there, I can keep do going in the same direction I, I can do and get rewarded along the way with wine, women, and so on. Well, there is a thrill in sin at a certain level, but then it always gets really scary down that road. I just, again, I'm not up here on some high horse saying, 
well, you know, the fake church up there acting foolish, attacking everybody, which actually drives folks away. But clearly, uh, clearly, uh, you know, aborting our children, this whole anti-human agenda, we can see where it leads. It's just, it, it, it's hellish. And it seems to me hell is almost of its own making. I know God judges us, but at the same time, to me, hell is just a place where all the bad spirits who resonate towards that go, and that's what makes it hell, is that the parasites, the vampires, don't have a God's creation to feed on. It's almost like a phantom zone that they're being sent to. I mean, what is your idea of hell from a biblical perspective? Well, I think that there really is uh, extreme suffering in hell. And, uh, you know, the reason is, it's like you didn't learn the lessons of earth through listening to conscience. And so you're going to get the extreme pain of consequences all poured onto your mind. And it tends to purge out of people in God's own mercy. It tends to purge any desire to do those things again because they remember the pain. And that's what I think hell does from a godly standpoint is help the people purge those evil desires because they experience the full pain. And remember, the entire concept of satanic-driven government is to exclude people from the pain of their consequences so that they aren't judged, so that they, do, you know, they get immunity from things. You can see that God needs to give consequences and pain that we might learn, if only by, at the end of this world, through the chains of hell. It's pretty heavy stuff, and whether folks believe in God and the devil or not, as a group consciousness, it is manifesting, and the world elite do follow Luciferianism. And then their minions are Satanist. It's just, it's hardcore. Chris, you're on the air with Joel Scalzo. Thanks for holding. Then we'll go to uh, John, Mario, Alex, and uh, Ian. Go ahead. Hey, how's it going, Mr. Skelton? Fine, uh, thank you. I have, a, I have a cool question. Um, I'm a college student here in liberal California, you know, and... Um, my, a lot of my uh, colleagues, uh, I've noticed, aren't really, you know, that educated, unfortunately. And uh, I'm not trying to be arrogant or anything, but, the, you know, the education level here is, like, really dumbed down. Um, and, you know, it's ridiculous. I live over here in the midst of what, what's happening with Jade Helm and everything, and, you know, it's pretty scary stuff. But, um, you know, I, I just, my question was for you is, what do you think about, you know, the whole uh, Edward Snowden revelations and whatnot, because uh, my colleagues, when I told them about it, they couldn't care less. I mean, they don't even know who their uh, governor is, let alone the vice president. So, what's your opinion on that? Well, the Edward Snowden revelations, and I think he's sincere, by the way, um, I think that they're the most significant revelation because it gave it, uh, the mainstream world at least a glimpse into the fact of this total awareness spying program that the governments have been involved in. And Snowden didn't even know half the picture. I mean, they've been spying on everyone and everything for years, uh, even before 9-11. It's very, very significant, and it's a good test for people. If they aren't concerned with total spying of people, it's because they've been told it's just metadata, that it isn't the content. Let me tell you, it's impossible to extract the metadata until you have the, the total content. They've got it all. And you have to understand the reason. The reason is eventually to take down dissidents. You know it can't be for terrorism because terrorism is mostly a controlled government operation. So this is a litmus test to me to see if people have a good conscience. They should be concerned if they aren't. I don't really deal with a lot of people who don't sense that something's wrong. I only concentrate my efforts on those that are at least aware enough to sense that something's wrong. I was about to say, Christ said, knock the dust off your feet. It's not that we don't love these people, but when they laugh at us and they show that spirit of contempt, it means they're probably too far gone. You need to move on to those that are receptive. That's where you want to plant your seeds is in the good soil uh, where it actually bears fruit. Definitely. You know, I have a, uh, when I had, I bought my laptop to, uh, when I bought my laptop to school one time, uh, you know, do, uh, do a presentation and whatnot, people were asking why I had tape on my webcam. You know, they were ridiculing me for it. And, I mean, I explained to them why, you know, because of the whole NSA thing, and I told them what was going on and everything, and they couldn't care less. They used that whole false straw man argument. Well, about, sure, they you know, think denying there's a problem controls reality. They're very childlike. Joel Skousen's our guest. Joel, can I push your arm for one more segment? Sure. All right, worldaffairsbrief.com. Thanks for doing that. Uh, thank you, caller. Uh, John, Mario, Alex, and others. We're going to come back and rapid fire go through your calls. So be ready with your questions or comments straight ahead. Back in just a few minutes.
Uh, yes, my, my, my question is, um, I'm a black male. Um, I speak Spanish fluently, and I just bought, uh, I went down and got some property down in Panama. I like Joe's um, uh, expert opinion on Panama. I'm just really concerned. I love the country. I'm just concerned about China and Panama with the Panama Canal. Well, that's a good question. You ought to be concerned. I've spent a lot of time in Central America, including Panama. It's got, uh, you know, perhaps the best uh, banking uh, ability for Americans, even despite the new uh, shutdown of most, uh, a lot of banks in Central America aren't dealing with Americans anymore, but you can get uh, service in Panama. Um, you've got to remember, though, that uh, Panama is not a, a principled country. It'll make a deal with anybody who plans to bail them out. That's why they made their extensive deals with uh, Red China. China is intending to take the Panama Canal, and that means occupying the country someday. What I'm telling you is that all of the expat experience about the nice, cheap, easy living in, in Latin America, especially Central America, won't hold up during a wartime scenario. The tourist economy will disappear. There'll be a constant deficit. I think they'll confiscate American bank accounts and perhaps American property. So I think while you still have a few years to enjoy that, you ought to make plans to come back and strategically uh, locate uh, in the United States um, and you might reference my book on that. but uh, Absolutely. Think, Joe, let me ask a question. Is there anywhere in the world you think is better than the United States? No, not for Americans especially. Uh, Americans can blend in here. We're going to lose our liberty as a nation, in my opinion, but there will be pockets, large pockets of resistance, especially out west, where a lot of uh, the good people will migrate after and during war, uh, and there will be majorities, new majorities formed that I think will be able sure. to resist. I mean, the preppers are the people that see it coming. Thank you for the great call, John. Uh, and, and just by the source of our economy, and we'll build new, new little societies. Uh, let's talk to Alex in Wisconsin. You're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, salutations, Joel. Alex, uh, I have two questions. First question from Joel is, uh, I've heard Alex answer this one, but uh, what's at the bottom of the rabbit hole? Uh, and you're talking about the globalist conspiracy? Uh, well, where does it all end with, you know, is it just Satanism, as Alex says, or is, uh, you know, where does it all get to the bottom of it, you know? What's the where, end game? The bottom? Well, Thank you. you know, the, the end game is uh, total control without you realizing that you're under total control. In other words... Sufficient crises so that people yield up their sovereignty and, they fr and their free will and keeping you in constant crisis uh, so that you will continue to do that. But ultimately, Satan is interested in the corruption of the soul. It is a satanic agenda, and that's why he's not content only for control. He wants corruption as well. That's why he's working on Hollywood, literature, you know, books, movies. Uh, and you can see the acceleration. They're now... In major newspapers saying pedophilia is not a big deal, and you're basically a pedophobe. I mean, they're really, uh, there is no bottom of the pit. Thank you, caller. Appreciate that. One last call, and I'll come back to the other callers. Joel's got to go. Mario, you're our tail gunner with Joel Skousen. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Hi, Joel. Just want to say I'm a huge fan. Uh, me and my girlfriend were at Cal Gym. We just love the energy you brought. Uh, people are waking up. There's no question about that. Um, Joel, for you, um, people are waking, you know, to the atrocities that our government are part of, but some are still worried about questions like conspiracies about inflatable balls in the NFL, um, but they don't want to believe that there's evil people in control in the government. What would you say to that? Well, that's a, that's a big question. First of all, you've got to remember that there's a lot of phony conspiracy theories put out there specifically to discredit true conspiracies. Cass Sunstein think, admitted that White House plan. Right. I, I spent a lot, a lot of time for brief debunking what I consider the false conspiracies. And they're all over the place. There's a lot of conspiracies talking about imminent nuclear war because of Ukraine. It's not going to happen. Russia isn't ready yet. And they're going to get people tired of who, who buy into that and run around with their ch like a head with their uh, cut off, claiming that nuclear war is imminent. And when it doesn't happen, then when the real threat gets close, sure. nobody, nobody will listen. Well, look at how we never said martial law this summer, that it was training for that and part of a long-term conditioning. They never quoted us or linked to us. They just said, we said imminent 
you know, war takeover this summer. So when it doesn't happen, they'll write articles and say we said that. So obviously that's their agenda. And then even in the economy, we've had people, notable people from Peter Schiff to uh, John uh, um, Williams. Williams and uh, Gerald Salini uh, for the past three years predicting imminent collapse. And they don't understand, I'm sure the economy in the free market it should collapse, but they don't understand the power of the powers that be to keep things going and to not do Joe, that. Joe, so we're out of time. Thank you so much. We're on the we'll march. Be back.